What's up, everybody? This is Dark Masic with Brutally Delicious coming at you to review Sabaton's brand new album, War to End All Wars. So I've been a fan of Sabaton for a long while now. Listened to them starting around 2009. Saw them on their first headlining U.S. tour back in 2012. I remember seeing them upstage Iced Earth in 2014, back when I thought Iced Earth was just about the best live band there ever was or would be. So... As I've started to do with some bands I'm familiar with, I'm going to do a track by track on this album. I went into this having heard only the Christmas truce, much like James Bond, I was trying to avoid the singles. Right off the bat, holy fuck, Stormtroopers. Was not expecting this from them. It's more typically power than I ever thought they would be. Except for maybe the Lion in the North, but come the fuck on. It's interesting with Sabaton because compared to most other bands of their genre, I don't think they sound anything like them. They sound nothing like Blind Guardian, nothing like Dragon Force, nothing like Halloween or Rhapsody or Ed Guy or any of those. But Stormtroopers, I mean, this could have been like a slower Rhapsody song. I I thought it was incredible. This totally is the kind of thing that would get you pumped up. And wow, this guitar solo is incredible. I was not expecting anything like this from them. This is Luca Torilli level. What the hell did you change, guys? I love it, but this is different. Maybe Tommy and Chris kicked him in the ass, but whatever happened, it's great. On to track two. We're now on Dreadnought. We're definitely getting some Bismarck vibes here. This is back to their typical art of war kind of trotting anthem. It's great. I did prefer Bismarck for the obvious comparison, but still, it's a great second track when you got to bring things down a little bit and settle into the groove. Track three, The Unkillable Soldier. This pre-chorus is way danceable. It's atypical for them, but still fun and clever in all the ways that you'd expect. Very big Universe on Fire by Glory Hammer vibes here. Again, total dance-off. Not what you'd expect, but fucking good. There is some more great guitar work here. Really, I'm just wondering whether they let Tommy loose and maybe Chris too. I thought the songs were mostly written by Parr and Joachim, so I'm curious whether this is the beginning of a new collaboration. Track 4, Soldier of Heaven. Much like The Unkillable Soldier, it sounds like a more danceable Carolus Rex or Last Stand track. Good stuff, and again, these guitar solos are wonderful. I love that you are letting them loose. Track 5, Hellfighters. Is this Jockham singing over an Exodus track? Like, what the hell is this guitar riff? It's awesome, It's but it's so fucking thrashy. I haven't heard them do anything like this since Reign of Terror from Prima Victoria. I'm getting the idea that this is no longer just the two of them running the show and i'm glad because tommy johansson has his other band they're now called majestica previously called rain exceed where he does a whole lot of wonderful symphonic stuff and i kind of like that they're bringing it in i'm curious whether it's pissing off their long-term fans but i'm one of them so shut up track six race to the sea this is a very typical chorus from them exactly what you'd expect but i still fucking love it Not much to say for anyone who has listened to Sabaton before, other than another great song in their catalog. On to Lady of the Dark. It definitely sounds familiar to one of their previous hits. I'm having trouble placing it right now. I do think it's pretty sweet, and again, fairly typical for them. And a nice follow-up to the Night Witches kinds of honors for singing about unsung female heroes from about 100 years ago. I think Night Witches was a little bit better, but... It's also cooler subject matter, so no slide on this song. Onward to Valley of Death. More typical stuff for them. It's got a great groove and really awesome gang vocals on the chorus. It reminds me of, I think, White Death. Again, they they definitely have a style, so maybe I'm conflating this with a different song. I am morally obligated to point out that the guitar solo section in the rhythm has the same chords as the chorus to Africa. To be fair, so does Bastard Son of Odin by Battle Beast and a whole lot of other shit that I'm forgetting right now. Onward to Christmas Truce. I've already heard this one, so the novelty is a little bit worn off. I think the vocals on the chorus are a little bit clumsy, specifically the line, and the snow turns the ground white. But this is the only historical event of World War I on this album that I'd already heard of, so it made it pleasant. And at the end of the day, it is still a great track, and I love the piano and how somber it makes it. Last song, Versailles. Wow, they saved one of the best tracks for last. This is so fucking good, so anthemic. They had better play this shit live or at least have it go over the PA at the end of the show. I love the victorious nature of it, even though it is kind of haunting because it's about the reality of war and how naive they were for thinking that this was the end of all war. 
I briefly perused some Reddit comments on this, and it did seem like some of the fans on our power metal were disappointed. I certainly was not. I don't know if it's their best album ever, but I think it's definitely on par with the last two or three. And Stormtroopers is an instant classic. Great shit, guys. Can't wait for the next tour. Come back to America soon. Disappointed you're not on the rescheduled Judas Priest dates, even though I love Queensryche. Rock on. Hello out there. Yes, hello out there, everyone. I'm Hal Schwartz. And I'm Flynn McClain. Together we host None But the Brave, a podcast dedicated to the music and career of Bruce Springsteen. Bruce and E Street Band are on tour right now for the first time in six years, and we're taking a detailed look at what's happening on stage in our bi-weekly episodes. We've also been recently joined by some very exciting guests, including rock journalist Warren Zanes and Stephen Hyden, Backstreet's Magazine founder Charles Cross, and Barstool's Kirk Menahan. If you're a diehard Springsteen fan, this is the show for you. So please subscribe to Nimba the Brave on your favorite podcasting platform, and we hope to see you further on up the road. Thank you so much! We'll be seeing you!